Venturing into the world of software engineering, we encounter a critical tool that underpins approximately 70% of major software projects, the UML diagram. It's like a map for building software and is used in about 70% of big software projects. These diagrams help turn big ideas into plans that can actually be made into software. Think of UML diagrams like a guidebook for software. They help prevent mistakes. In fact, a study shows that using them can cut down errors in plans by 35%. That's a big deal because it means making better software with fewer problems. UML diagrams comes in different types, each for a different part of making software. Some show how the parts of a system fit together, while others show how different parts talk to each other. They use a special kind of picture language to show all this. We are going to see how these diagrams help make ideas real, which is why they are used in more than half of the successful software projects around the world. They are super important for building strong, flexible and effective software. So let's dive in and learn how they work and why they are so important in making cool softwares. And just a quick info for you. UML diagrams are like a guidebook for software, so a professional who wants to switch careers with software engineering by learning from the experts can try giving a shot to Simply Learn's postgraduate program in full stack web development. He can accelerate his career as a software developer through this postgraduate program in full stack web development course in collaboration with Caltech CTMA. In just a few months, you will learn modern coding techniques with bootcamp level intensity and gain all you need to be a full stack technologist. The course link is mentioned in the description box that will navigate you to the home page where you can find a complete overview of the program being offered. Take action, upskill and get ahead. So without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we will learn today is UML. UML or Unified Modeling Language. It is a set of graphical notation techniques to create visual models of software systems. It helps in depicting the structure and behavior of systems in systematic manner. It is developed in the 1990s and UML has become a standard in software engineering for visualizing and documenting software systems. So this was about UML. Now moving to the importance of UML in software engineering. So the first importance is that it plays key role in software development. UML diagrams provide a clear and concise way to communicate complex software designs. They facilitate better understanding within teams and effective communication with external stakeholders. Now the next point is it enhances design and documentation. So UML aids in both the design and documentation phase of software engineering. It provides a standardized approach to visualize system architecture and processes. And the next key role is improvising efficiency and reducing errors. So UML diagrams help in identifying potential issues early in the development process and they contribute to a more efficient workflow and reduced error rates. Now moving to the next key role that is facilitating collaboration and understanding. So by visualizing complex systems, UML diagrams enable easier collaboration among diverse team members. They help in ensuring all stakeholders have a common understanding of the system. And UML in action, there's a key role such as planning that explains how UML was used in the initial planning stages and the design that shows how UML diagrams assisted in designing the system architecture and the communication. UML facilitated effective communication among team members and stakeholders. So this was the importance of UML diagrams across all the software teams. Now we'll move to the types of UML diagrams that are available in the market. So mainly UML has two types of diagrams. One is structural and other is the behavioral diagrams. So structural diagrams contains class diagrams, component diagrams, object diagrams and they represent instances of classes at a specific moment in time. An object diagram showing various instantiated objects and their relationships. And there are package diagrams also that illustrate how different packages and their elements are organized in a system. And then comes a package diagram. So a package diagram displaying the system's packages and dependencies. And then we have behavioral diagrams that contains use case diagrams, sequence diagrams and activity diagrams that show the dynamic flow of control from activity to activity within the system and an activity diagram depicting the flow of activities in a process or workflow is defined as behavioral diagram. And there are state machine diagrams that represent the states and transitions of a system or its component. So a state diagram illustrating the various states an object goes through and the transition based on events. And then there are interaction diagrams. 
as you can see in the flow of the diagram that is UML diagram type they are interaction diagrams and below that only there are communication diagrams that focus on the interaction between objects but highlight their organization and relationships and a communication diagram that shows objects their links and the messages exchanged and then we have timing diagrams so timing diagram represent the behavior of objects throughout a given period and the interactions in terms of timing constraints and a timing diagram showing the state changes and interactions of objects over time and then we have deployment diagram that shows the physical deployment of artifacts or nodes a deployment diagram displaying the configuration of runtime processing elements and the software components processes and objects that live on them so this was all about the uml diagram type so the main types are structural and behavioral diagrams and below that we have other class diagram profile diagram package diagram object diagram component diagram and under behavioral we have sequence diagram timing diagram state machine diagram and interaction diagram so these are the main types now we'll move to create a uml diagram so this is a step by step process to create a uml diagram so the first step is identify main classes so we'll start with the first step that is identify main classes we will start with determining the primary classes in your system then we will define attributes and operations for these classes only that is for each class we will define its attributes that is properties and operations that are functions or methods and then we will illustrate relationships that is we will show the relationship between classes such as inheritance association and dependency and in uml that is unified modeling language associations represent the relationships between classes they show how objects of one class connect and interact with objects of another class so let's see the diagram so our first diagram is book so book is the class here and then we have attributes that is title so what is the title of the book and then we have pressed a colon and then the data type of title that is string and then we have author then colon string and then the isbn number of the book and then we have the method here that is check availability and here in this method we will check whether the book is available in the library or not so here we will create the library distribution system as a uml diagram so we have created the class book and its attributes and methods and now we will create a class called member so the member who is coming to the library to borrow a book so now we will define its attributes and methods so the first attribute we will define is name and it's of data type string and then we have membership id and then loan records and we have defined a method here that is borrow book and then we have another class that is loan so we will define its attribute that is loan date due date return date and the next is the column for methods and here we will define the method that is renew loan and in this you could see the plus signs and the hashtag signs so here the plus sign indicates that the attributes are public to all the classes so they can be inherited or associated with other classes and the hash signs that is in the member class so it is the protected attribute that is loan records so records can't be accessed by other items or the other classes so now we will see the association between these classes so first we'll see the association between member and book class so this association is represented by the borrow book method so operation in the member class it indicates that a member can borrow a book and in the uml diagram this would typically be shown as a line connecting the member and book classes and the nature of this association can be further detailed with multiplicity which indicates how many instances of one class can be associated with one instance of the other class for example a member can borrow multiple books and a book can be borrowed by multiple members so for that we have associated both the book and the member class and then we will see the association between member and loan class so the loan records attribute in the member class represents this association this shows that a member has a relationship with loan that is a member has zero or more loan records in the uml diagram a line would connect member and loan often with multiplicity indicating that one member can have multiple loans and then we have association between book and loan so this association is implicit in the context of a library system each loan record would be associated with a specific book 
indicating which book is on loan. In the UML diagram, a line would connect the book and loan classes, typically with the multiplicity of one. That is, each loan is for one book. So the associations are visualized as lines connecting the classes. And the ends of the lines can have symbols or labels showing the nature of the relationship like arrows or multiplicity indicators. So the types of arrows you use to represent an association depends on the nature of the relationship between the classes. So association without navigation that is bidirectional or unidirected. When objects of both classes can access each other and the direction of the relationship isn't emphasized. So a plain line without arrows. Between member and the book class, in the case of borrowing books, you can see that this can be a plain line as both the member and book are aware of each other in the transaction. So this was the unidirectional or bidirectional. So both can have a transaction between them. And then we have association with navigation that is unidirectional. So when objects of one class can access objects of the other class, but not vice versa. So for this, we will draw a line with a single arrowhead pointing towards the class that is being accessed. For example, if we see here, if only members need to have direct knowledge or access to their loan records, but not the other way around, you would use a line with an arrow pointing from member to the loan class. So this was about this UML diagram that is library management system. So now moving to the next topic that is association in UML diagrams. So here we will understand association between the classes and how we can access their methods and attributes. So certainly understanding associations in UML that is unified modeling language is crucial for accurately modeling the relationships between classes in a system. Now we'll break down different types of association commonly used in UML diagrams. So the first is simple association. So this represents a general relationship where instances of one class are connected to instance of another class. For this type of association, we usually represent this with a simple line without arrows, indicating a bi-directional or non-directional relationship. So a customer class associated with an order class. So a customer can order one order or a order is associated with a customer. So this was about the simple association. Now moving to the next that is association with navigation that is unidirectional. So it indicates that one class can navigate to or access another class but not vice versa. So to indicate this type of navigation we use a line with an arrow pointing towards the class that is being accessed. Now moving to the next that is bidirectional association. So both classes are aware of each other and can navigate to each other. So to represent this will use a line with arrowheads on both ends or no arrowheads at all. So this was about the bidirectional association. Now moving to the next that is aggregation. So a special form of association that represents a whole part relationship but without strong ownership. The parts can exist independently of the whole and for this aggregation we will use a line with a hollow diamond at the whole class end. So this was about aggregation. Now moving to the next, that is composition. So a stronger form of aggregation implying strong ownership. If the whole is destroyed, the parts are destroyed too. So to represent them, we'll use a line with a filled diamond at the whole class end. For example, a house class that is whole and a room class that is a part. If the house is destroyed, so the rooms cease to exist. So the rooms will also be destroyed. So this is about the composition association and there are also other associations that is reflexive multiplicity but these are not generally used in drawing UML diagrams. So in conclusion when creating a UML diagram understanding these associations helps in accurately modeling how objects in the system interact and depend on each other. They also assist in designing the system's architecture and are critical for developers to understand the dynamics of object interactions within the system. So each type of association in UML diagrams, it's a unique way to represent different kinds of relationships that can exist between classes, contributing to a comprehensive and clear model of the system structure and behavior. And with this, we have come to the end of this tutorial. Hope you guys found it informative and helpful. Then like, share and subscribe. Till then, stay safe and keep learning.